<laughs> Sorry about that. Mm. Sort of raining a little bit here. Uh, had to roll up my car windows real quick. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> this afternoon I want to ask you a question. Is copyright music a totalitarian form of controlling music? All right. Now, what I mean by that is the rules in copyright infringement are so strict, right? That it's almost like its own government, right? If you can't sing another person's song, ain't that a bit uh, totalitarian? Now, what totalitarian means is only one person legally can sing the song. Well, what happened to writing a song everyone can sing? Why does the government, the FBI, especially get to do that with music? And when I am music and I write the songs. That's a little simple from Barry Manilow, but um, don't the lyrics go? I write the songs that make the whole world sing. Ain't that the point of any one who sings? <laughs> to write it not for just themselves, but the whole world? <laughs> to sing along with them? How greedy and corrupt are you in a government that won't allow anyone else but one artist to sing a song? And only they can sell or buy the song. <clears throat> and no exceptions to that rule, right? Ain't that totalitarianism? <laughs> Where you're not letting anyone but one person sing a song knowing everyone should be able to sing a song. I know. Now, that's the difference between uh, real singing and real music, too. I don't know. Now, most singers who write a song want you for free to sing their songs. But they came up with this idea of copyright infringement to block you basically from doing that. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Which is crazy in and of itself. Because anyone at any time, at anywhere, in any place can sing any fucking song. <laughs> and if you go to a little concert area and you put out a hat, you can make money off that shit too. <laughs> Know what I mean? Know what I mean? If you do a good job, anyway, anyway. <laughs> That's part of the point there, too. Right. <clears throat> Didn't uh, Jimmy and uh, Molly do that a little bit last week, too? Went down to the subway and, you know, sung for the crowd? <laughs> well, that's part of the point there, I know. You know, you can make money <laughs> illegally off of copyright infringement songs, right? Now, what I'm trying to do is do it legally as a teacher. As a teacher. Now... A, I don't know why you can't teach the music. All right. Oh, oh listen to the music. Uh, if you know what I mean. Um, why can't we just simply teach people to sing these songs? I don't know. As both impersonators and imitators of our favorite artists, right? <laughs> <clears throat> There's really nothing to leave about that. I know. Now, some singers and some lessons might be more popular than others, meaning YouTube has to pay them more money, right? Right. Now, that's like Ken or the other singers out there who's teaching you to sing a song. All right. Now, I'm using popular music, right, to teach you to sing with it, right? Can't say I'm not. Nah. Someone's teaching you to sing my ear, you can't say I'm not. <laughs> You don't like it for some reason. You're being dicks about it. But do I give a shit? No. No. Fair use allows me to do the, that under those two flags. Now, if you be a dick about it, I can critique the songs negatively or positively too, dumbasses. Know what I mean there? <laughs> but that means I still get to use an actual clip of the song to critique it. <laughs> On YouTube too. No. <laughs> Can't use the whole song or the whole album 
Maybe no more than 30 seconds, but if I'm using a clip and I'm critiquing the clip, that's fine too. That's fine too. So again, that's all legal means to use copyright infringement songs. Yeah. Another thing you can do is do a bunch of songs too, and then they can't all say claim copyright infringement on that one video, depending on how long it is too. I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> Not what I mean there. Not what I mean there. That's sort of the point too. I know. Now, <clears throat> on my channels, Shane One Lucky, I just started out as a general singer and teacher of music, right? And showed you my impersonation skills first, right? Now, the reason why I did that is I didn't quite understand all the rules yet. Then on the second channel, Shane Twelve Lee, and. Uh, I did focus more on teaching you comedy and impersonation, right? Of popular songs. And sung the whole song a cappella without music. Mm -hmm. Unrehearsed, unedited, all me. Mm -hmm. Now that's teaching you to sing by ear and also develop your own voice and also to do a mild impersonation. Right. So what's wrong with that, YouTube? Nothing. Nothing. As long as I'm just teaching you how to impersonate a certain portion of the actual recording. <clears throat> now, for instance, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. It's the eye of the tiger that's the thrill of the fight rising up to the challenge of our rival and the last lone survivor starts his prey in the night. Well, again, <sighs> that's an Imitation of the band uh, Survivor based upon my hearing of it. <coughs> Not saying it's perfectly spot on, say 50 50, maybe. <coughs> but I can also work on it to make it better. It's the eye of the tiger, that's the thrill of the fight, rising up to the challenge of our rival. And the last no survivor stops his prey in the night. So again, now. now what I did there is just repeatedly sung the line, right? Twice and, uh, of the same song. And, uh, now copyright is where you sing the whole song all the way through, I guess, whatever, whatever. But if you're teaching the song, right, you can teach the whole song or parts of the song too, right? <laughs> Now in choir, mm -hmm. we learn a whole song, right? That's where I'm taking that from, it's choir. And, uh, now what we do is we start off with the music of verse, right? The sheet music, right? <coughs> then the um, music teacher will play the first note of the song, right? <coughs> Let's say it's an Elton John song or whatever. And he'll play the first note of the song. So then he goes from there, and then uh, you try to hone in on that note, right? The whole class, right? Now, <clears throat> we use the number system. Let's say the first note is an F, so that'll be a four. Oh. So anyway. Oh. Um, you start with the F, so you are the four. Right? Now, in our system, 1 is C, 2 is D, 3 is E, 4 is F, 5 is G, 6 is A, 7 is B, and 1 goes back to C. And now, now, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, Ti, La, Do. And now, do, do. You want to use that system as well. So whatever you want to use, right? But the point is, totalitarianism has taken over the music business to where only one person now can sing a song based upon intellectual property. <laughs> you mean to tell me you think you're the only motherfucker who can come up with a song like that? Mm -hmm. Then why do you argue about copyright infringement if a song is similar to yours and there's a thing called unison music, right? You know what the idea of unison in music means is all music originates from one sound, right? Meaning, if you sing a C, it's always the C. Mm -hmm. Now, you can combine it with your speaking voice, which is called talk singing, right? 
<clears throat> for instance, oh, that's trying to sink your neck. But when I do like this, my eyes adored you. Though I never laid a hand on you, my eyes adored you. Like a million miles away from me, you couldn't see how I adored you. So close, so close, and yet so far. Now that's Frankie Valley's song, but I did it in my talk scene voice, right? So that's the point there, right? Now if I want to, I can might impersonate and try to make it sound like Frankie Valley. My eyes told you, though I never laid a hand on you, my eyes told you. Like a million miles away from me, you couldn't see how I told you. So close. So close and yet so far. So again, that's an impersonation based upon the soundtrack of hearing the song on the radio as well. As well. But it's only one line to the song. Oh, no. It's not copyright infringement either. Just one line is not copyright infringement everywhere. Now, not only oh, no. are there, you know, claiming the vocals are mechanical. But so are the instruments, right? Somehow mechanical, right? <clears throat> well, we know our instruments are mechanical. They're played, right? Not sung, right? Well, singing is a form of communication, right? Which goes to freedom of speech. See, when you have freedom of speech, you cannot copyright a song under those terms, right? In other words, you're contradicting the idea of freedom of speech by saying only one person can sing or sung or say the words of the song right now the thing is any one person can come up with a similarity in words in any song right that's why copyright infringement is a little shallow when it comes to that area i know <clears throat> let's take uh sammy davis's um candy man i know who can take the sunshine Sprinkle it with dew, cover it with chocolate, do a miracle or two. The candy man can, the candy man can, the candy man can, cause he mixes it with love to make the world taste good. Now that's one line of the song, sung as a mild impersonation of uh, Sammy Davis <coughs> in, in a similar style to his voice, right? That's all it is, it's a mild impersonation of one line to the song, all right? Not copyright infringement, all right? Now, the whole song has instruments, right? And the singing as well, I know. Now, <clears throat> another thing we're guaranteed under the Constitution is a right to happiness. Well, if singing a person's songs makes me happy, why can't I sing the song to make myself happy? Come on, get happy. Come on, world, there's a song we'll be singing. Come on, get happy. Come on, get happy. That's the point. Most people like singing along with their favorite artists. But you're almost forbidding them from doing so with this Wicked rule called copyright infringement. No. If you do it, we'll smack you and take down your whole channel if you've seen copyright infringement songs. Well, I thought we were America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, right? You take down my channel and I'm trying to teach people to think I just put up more channels with under different names, but it'll still be me. I know. Because <laughs> people attack me on YouTube daily anyway over bullshit. Things that happened 22, 23 years ago that I don't even remember. <laughs> and you can't make me remember it all that time. <laughs> and keep accusing me of doing something that had they seen me really do it, they would arrest me for it too, right? Right. <laughs> well, if you're woken up by someone in the middle of the night, and you're not look, sure what's going on there, you're just exploring what's going on. I know. And you're not thinking rationally, you're thinking, oh, it's been a while, this thing going on here. So, uh, 
you go over to her and she starts letting you undress her and you start undressing her or something like that. I don't know if that were to happen. And uh, not sure what's going on. I don't know. The child isn't asking you for water or anything like that, hypothetically. But uh, you're trying to figure out what's going on. I don't know. Well, she starts letting you undress her and you uh, are exploring those options, right? You might lay her on the ground and see if she wants a uh, diaper change or something and look up and down a little bit. You know, not too evasive. Stick out your tongue or something. No no big deal. Not trying to, you know, play with the child a little bit too. And what if she wants to get a bath? You know, so you undress yourself. Say you were just asleep and had a morning wood or something. You weren't thinking at first. And you walk around with the couch a little bit trying to figure out what she wants. I know. And she's not talking or anything. So then you get dressed and redress her. And you're wondering, who showed you to do that? I know. So she, because she started in interacting with you a little differently than you're used to as well. Not that you're around four-year-olds a lot or know what they really do. <laughs> but anyway, so if she were to do something like that with you, and you ask her who showed her that, and she says, Grandma, well, maybe she just wanted a bath or something. Well, doesn't it? I know. Now, I ain't saying that couldn't cross my mind that it might be something sexual, but whatever. I know. Would that seem really sexual to you? I know. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I don't know either. I don't know either. I'm just trying to interact with the child and figure out what the hell's going on. I don't know. If that were to occur, hypothetically, right? <clears throat> or things like that. I don't know. And like I said, I'm asleep <laughs> trying to figure out what this child wants and not thinking, hey, it's real late in the night. Maybe I should just ask her if she wants some water or something. Because if you, if you just fell asleep a few minutes ago, you don't know what's, you know, and sort of groggy, you're not thinking rationally at that time. <laughs> but you know you're, you don't take it too, too far. <clears throat> and you don't get on top of her to try and have sex with her or anything. Either you're about three feet away from her. Maybe undressed a little bit and with a semi-boner, not really, you know, touching yourself either in front of her at all. <laughs> Of course, you can say, yeah, maybe I masturbated to her in sarcasm, but I don't remember if I did any of this either. either. Someone just wants me to have done it with the child, right? Not the same thing as doing it with the child either. either. So if you want me to have done something with the child, I would have had to put my penis, hand on my penis and start masturbating to her for it to be something sexual. But if I was just undressed, sort of standing around there, and see if you wanted a bath or a shower or something with me. I don't know. Why can't a stepdad take a bath with his new stepdaughter, not knowing what she wants? And then you get dressed and dress her, and you ask her who showed her that, and she says, Grandma, well, you're not sure what the hell's even going on there, right? <laughs> so you tell your wife or something, because what the fuck's going on? <laughs> this is all confusing to you. <laughs> you never had a child ever interact with you that way before either. Don't say you have. Don't say you have. <laughs> Or you're a lying motherfucker if they were to, if they were to. <laughs> so again, what are you saying is going on here, right? A, that's supposed to be privacy in your own home while you're sleeping on the couch and the daughter comes in there and wakes you up, I know. You don't know what the hell she wants in the middle of the night if you're, you are just went to sleep a few minutes ago and you don't know how long, what time it is or anything either, you know. You just know the TV is off and she's in there with you suddenly and you're trying to figure it out, I don't know. <clears throat> Now, should she immediately let her new stepdad undress her? I don't know. I'm not a judge in that area, I know. But what does that mean if she doesn't? She said, Grandma showed her how to do that. I don't know. I'm not, uh, you know, accusing anybody of anything, but I would know all that behavior was a little weird if she's interacting with me that rapidly, and I just met her maybe the previous day or two before, and she's acting out with me that way, I know. Now, that's what they usually call it when a child and an adult who just meet interact that way. It's called acting out, right? It's not planned, right? It's not as though I snuck into the bedroom and lured the child out there to me and then started undressing her. She came in there to me somewhat voluntarily. And that's all I might would think might could happen, maybe. Because <laughs> you keep insisting something could happen that me and the child, I guess, are... If the child's accusing me now, whoever it is. I don't know, Amanda. Is it you accusing me, maybe? 
thinking I did something more with you? I did not. Right. Because A, I don't see sex with a four-year-old. Right. And you have to wonder what your mother was up to if you came in there and she's been coaching you this whole time to say something bad about me. Mm -hmm. Unless she told you about it too. Right. And you just became obsessed with it that something happened. Did you, Amanda? I don't know. I don't know. Now, the problem is the law, right? Protects both me and you in that situation if I'm your new stepdad and you're acting a little off yourself, right? Well, that means as I'm innocent until proven guilty, right? So are you. I know. And we're both interacting in sort of a unusual situation for both of us, right? I'm your new stepdad and you're my new stepdaughter and I don't know what exactly you would want with me in the middle of the night after I just went to sleep and turned off the TV. And uh, you didn't go over there and turn on the TV. <laughs> that would have indicated something. But if you were to immediately let me undress you, that's not normal behavior between the new stepdad and the stepdaughter either. either. They don't normally interact that way. Now, if you had to wake me up and I was asleep on the couch, that could have happened too. I don't know. I know. Reason I don't know is someone here has been saying this for 12 years, right? 10 of the years were in silence until uh, I started writing blogs. And all I said, and it was one time, speaking of sleeping on the couch as well, I know, that I could have molested my stepdaughter but didn't. Keyword didn't. And that's all I said, right? Now that was because. For four years, a show was on NBC called Law and Order Special Victims Unit, and I was just making a reference briefly to that show, right? Can't disprove that either, either. It's not as though it's the first thing I said, but that's part of why I might have said it, right? And the Oprah show and all that, I know. I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm being a little sarcastic there, I know. Because of these shows, right? which came out in 99. My blog wasn't posted until around 2001 or 2002, right? Because I started having problems with the VA not wanting to back pay me till when I was discharged, right? And I was trying to make a case about it, right? On the internet, right? And it started with a website and a um, domain name called Angel Fire, as well as iFilms on <clears throat> the internet, as well as um, putting up videos on YouTube after iFilms. And then I went to different uh, genres like stick cam, live video, and stuff like that. And uh, teaching or entertaining people by impersonating my favorite artist. That's all. That's all. Well, if you can impersonate someone's speaking voice, why can't you do the same with the speaking voice, right? I don't understand that. And, uh, yeah, you own the copyright to the soundtrack, the whole thing. But I'm just teaching individually your voice only, only. How is that copyright infringement? It's not. That's not. Nowhere in the copyright infringement rules does it say specifically say no one but the artist can only sing that song, only they can sing it, right? Does it? Does it? I don't think that's what the law is about. I know. I think what it's about is you don't want people to make a lot of money off of your material if they're just impersonating you. Because anyone can do that too, right? Don't you understand about that, what I've been saying about impersonation and imitation in music to begin with? All impersonation is is impersonating someone's talk singing voice, and all imitation is is imitating the same notes in that talk singing voice. Now, when you imitate the note, it's the same note the artist is singing. Now, when you impersonate them, you're making your voice sound similar to theirs. Now, sometimes it's spot on, and sometimes you might creep your own voice in there, that's another way to sing as well. You can either do it as an impersonation or in your own voice. I've been telling you that too. So what else can I say to you, but I don't know what your problem is. You want to attack me uh, seven ways to Sunday and say I did something with my stepdaughter who was uh, I only lived with a few weeks, if, uh, about a week maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I can't put a time stamp on it, but if you can, Amanda, were you coached by your mom? <laughs> or did you build this idea up that something happened yourself? I don't know. That's a question to you now, dear. Have you been the one attacking me for 12 years on YouTube, Amanda? This is Eddie.
If you are, why? Are you having problems about going to the police yourself? Well, you and your mom, if she witnessed anything, have to say it happened together, too. too. And the problem is, if one of you isn't saying the same thing anymore, and, uh, and you're both telling a different story now, and, uh, and she denied it to the Garden City Police when someone, did you call the police on me and your mom? <laughs> Because me and your mom didn't call the police on ourselves. <laughs> Did Amanda Bliss have said he called the police on her and her mom? <laughs> and me? Trying to act like the confession was real. But the police hands were tied when they asked the same one, your mom. Did it happen? And she said, no, it never happened. Right. Well, Amanda, if you did all that, and, uh, and your mom cannot lie to the police, why are you assuming she did then, but not when she was telling you something happened? Right. If that's what she even said. And, uh, or did you lean to your own understanding in this, right? And because I was sleeping on the couch, you what? Came in there to me and voluntarily let me undress you? Right. Well, children don't only do that unless they're already molested by your grandma. <laughs> you know that, right, child? Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. I know. Normally, you stay in your bedroom with your mom. <laughs> All night, <laughs> dear. And you don't come creeping into your stepdad while he's asleep on the couch when he's about 160 pounds too, right? And you don't know what the hell's going on with you. Now I'm 400, 300 and something pounds, right? I don't want you now. <laughs> Didn't want you then. You're four, you know? And I don't even think you should be attracted to me anymore, you know? Or ever, or ever. <laughs> Not trying to get you. I don't know you to get you. I don't want you to get you. Like with Mary Bell's obsession with telling me about Patrick and all that. Had she not even called me, I wouldn't even know or care. But she told me that shit. What, I'm supposed to drop everything and say, oh, well, it's been three years now and that proves the child's mine or something. I'll pay you child support or something. I don't know what that's going on. <laughs> You ain't talked to me. You ain't sent me a letter. You ain't said a word or peep to me for three years. And I moved on with other girlfriends too. I don't know. <laughs> like you was married to Scott. I, I met a girl named Denise before I talked to you. And again, again. Now it was a one night stand there too. I know. But I knew her and she sort of uh, lived in my trailer a little bit for about two weeks too. too. And again, again. <laughs> I was trying to move on from you too. I know, crazy. Are you obsessed with me now because Patrick might be my son and you don't want to get a DNA test to find out? Well, fuck you, bitch. I don't care. You don't want a DNA test with me? Fuck you. Don't get what? <laughs> you know Patrick. I don't give a shit. <laughs> the boy's grown now. I can't even raise him or, or pay you child support. <laughs> now, if you wanted me to, like with Daphne, Daphne was sure Jonathan was mine. And you, I was just waiting to get a DNA test when I got until I got on disability, right? Well, once I got on disability, not only could I pay for Jonathan when we got the DNA test and it was 99.9%, .9%, right? I mean, only 100,000 other men I could have fathered Jonathan, but I doubt that happened, right? That's why it's 99.9%. .9%. So we get <laughs> Now, Patrick could have been my son and you didn't want a DNA test with me. I'm like, fine, well the government will have to pay for him anyway. <laughs> Not me. No. You and Jonathan, Patrick and Jonathan would be in the same boat since I'm disabled, right? You would both get a check from Social Security as a portion of your uh, my disability, right? And like with Mark, when he died, supposedly, his wife got Social Security because of his death, right? And her two children were taken care of that way, I guess. Unless he went crazy and they had a sex change and they caught it, thought he was the Lupo. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And he went on disability or something because of his brain tumor and then had a sex change and tried to have sex with me. Whatever, Mark. That's crazy in my mind, but okay, I fucked my stepbrother who had a sex change, cut off his penis and made it a pussy and grew small breasts for a woman. <laughs> But I only touched the breasts. I didn't lick them or suck them. I wasn't sure if they were real titties either. I ain't gonna do that shit, dumbass. I might see how quickly you can make me come one time. Which was under two minutes. Whatever. <laughs>
That don't bother me either, Mark. <laughs> if that was you, Molly. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is she acted just equally crazy as Mary Bell or any girl I had a one night stand with as well. I know. Or made me break up with her because she was treating me badly for 18 months and didn't want to believe the coincidences, right? Which is what she called them. Hmm. Which I agreed to after 18 months. Well, I guess to her, they're just coincidences. She don't give a shit about me. <laughs> she don't even want to treat it like it's a real sign from God. <laughs> Did you? Oh, no. Well, what makes you think I don't respect other people's opinion and religion? Right? Whatever gave you that idea? Oh, no. That I wouldn't accept you didn't want to be with me and you didn't believe in the coincidences the same as I did, which I called signs. Oh, no. Now, yeah, only one true sign was the birthday of you and my dad was July 3rd. Though in the Philippines, it's more a day ahead from here to there, right? But you were born on July 3rd before my dad, who was born after you, right? But you were both born on July 3rd, yeah, yeah. Now, what that means is in the Philippines, July 3rd came first, and then as it went around the world, my dad was born in Georgia on July 3rd. Coincidence. I agree with you there. Now, had you not told me Patrick's birth weight, I'll give a shit. Only thing is, that's a little confusing to me, because I looked in a pregnancy book, and depending on the DNA and the development of the child, right, normally children are at a smaller weight, depending on when you conceive them, and they get larger as they grow older. They don't really start packing on the pounds until the sixth to ninth month. Now, some babies, yes, are larger than others, and some are smaller. What can I say about that? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. But I don't know uh, your DNA nor Scott's. That might be somewhat true, but whose baby are you having in angels? You know what I mean? Typically, big men and little women might produce normal-sized children. How tall is Patrick now? I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't care. Mm -hmm. What does he look like now? I don't know. You won't even send me a picture anymore. I know. You showed me one picture. Right? Like I was supposed to turn over in my heels and thank my lucky stars I might have gotten you pregnant. And then you denied it was mine. So, okay. Bye. <laughs> don't call me anymore crazy. You don't even want to deal with it if it can be mine. I don't know. Like I give a damn or can make you care about something you didn't want in the first place, apparently. So fine. If you don't want my baby, I didn't want to have a baby with you either. And, uh, doing the others, bitch. And, uh, know what I mean? <laughs> there, there. Like with Sheena, I didn't know what her fucking problem was, but she didn't want to tell me what it was. Either, either. Like I knew what the hell she was talking about when I was just sitting in her Bible studies up to the point she broke up with me. And, uh, and talking about religious experience I had and, uh, when younger. Didn't bring race into it. Was telling her about God being the love of all nations and stuff like that. And my letters. And that God did not look upon the outward appearance but the heart. Mm -hmm. I never said a derogatory thing with her until she started breaking up with me and acting crazy. And I didn't know why. And she said I'd go overboard. How? <laughs> What did I do that went overboard with you? I don't, know. I don't even fucking know. <laughs> now, since I'm a seller, of course, I know how to cuss when someone's acting crazier and crazier. After they tell me that I've gone overboard, and I don't know what they mean even there. I, know. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Now, my shipmates knew you were right, neither. And they received the mail in the division before I get a chance to even see it. Now, hypothetically, could they have written you a derogatory letter in my name? Maybe. I don't know if they did or not. Right. But I also would hope they wouldn't as well. But if they did, could that be what? why you broke up with me? I don't know. I don't know. See, the thing is, even if they did, right? Right. And they knew they sent their letters within my letters. Right? Even if you sent all my letters back to me. They could still get their letters before I even seen them. Because, <laughs> see, they get the mail and bring it to the, the E-Division room. <laughs> right? 
You understand that, Sheena, right? No, I never called you a name. I, know. I was talking to you normally because I had no reason to be derogatory to you at all. I, know. I was, in fact, trying and still infatuated with you, at least, from the little time we spent on Palma, all right? I was still in love mode. I don't know why you changed your mode, right? I remember getting a card or something from you and a few, things, few pleasant letters, and I was pleasantly responding to you, right? And then about a month later, you went sort of ballistic on me, right? Talking about, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what. <laughs> Telling me I went overboard somehow. I didn't know what you were talking about. Now, I did have a problem with my shipmates because the MFM King, as soon as I got to the ship, got electrocuted. And ever since I got to work in the actual division, no one seemed to want to work with me. They were harassing me that I was gay, which is in part why I was trying to find a girlfriend on the cruise, right? I, I was also trying to meet someone in um, Italy, too, in when we went to the port there, I know. But it didn't work out the same as it worked out with you. I know. And that's the point, too. Now, I'm sort of the, you know, love at first sight type guy. I know. If I see someone I'm interested in, I, I can, if she responds to me the same, go for that female, only that female. I know. Now, you had the little redhead with you, and she was cute and all, but I was interested in you, apparently. I know. Don't know what else happened after that, either. I thought we had a decent time on the island, and, uh, and I never became derogatory until you told me I went overboard, like, you know, about a month later, right? Not knowing even what you were talking about. And I'm like, all I did was ask you to fast and pray a little bit. I mean, if you don't want to, fine. I don't know what's going on with you. But I do have a suggestion, and you might not want to believe it after all this time, because someone's obviously trying to frame me repeatedly. For doing something wrong when I didn't do that wrong. Oh, no. Is that you now? Oh, no. Have you become my shipmates who hated me since day one after King got electrocuted down on the job? Which I was told by Lieutenant Guzman, our commander oh, no. of the whole E Division, not to touch a damn thing for the first month because I didn't know shit. And I don't care if you believe me or not, still, King, fuck off if you think I electrocuted you. I did not. I'll never admit to that shit a day in my life. You can go to hell first. Never did I touch the fucking breaker. Never, ever would I. Even if you were my worst enemy, dumbass, I wouldn't do that. I know. And I don't give a shit what you believe. I did not touch the fucking breaker. Mm -hmm. And you can't make me ever admit it either. either. Not even under torture, motherfucker. And I never would. No, no. Nor would I admit to touching Amanda inappropriately if she came on to me and came in the living room to me and woke me up in the middle of the night. Not sure what she wanted. Right. I wouldn't do anything inappropriate with her in the privacy of my own home either. either. I just sort of, you know, not be not sure what she wanted initially. Right. But I wouldn't take it too far either. Uh, you know, don't children sometimes play in, hmm, there's things like that, or, hmm, that. I mean, what did you see? Did I jack myself off in front of her? Did I get on top of her physically? I don't know. I don't know. Seems to be what you're insinuating that happened. I don't know. Did it? I mean, someone seems to know what all happened here, right? But me and Daphne, apparently. Or did she tell the child something happened and she just fixated upon it or something? I don't know. What can I tell you other than... I don't remember a damn thing happening, A, because I fell three stories and landed badly, apparently, and broke my sacrum from the center of the spine to the right. <laughs> Normally that paralyzes people, idiots. Permanently. Yet somehow I was able to walk again. Though I was in pain, and they had me on pain medication for two weeks. And also a liquid diet. Because <laughs> my small intestines were working. Well, they tried to put me on solid food, but I had digestion problems because my small intestines was dead. And, uh, at least that's what they told me. <laughs> so anyway, they had to pump the food out my stomach because my small intestines wouldn't digest the food. So the only thing I could think to do was pray to Jesus to heal me. Right. 
Well, guess what? Within 24 hours, I took the tube out of my mouth on my own, started eating, and was able to keep the food down. Whatever. And then within the, um, by the third week, I started getting out of bed. Mm -hmm. Started getting stronger, right? Well, they said I would be bedridden, right? Meaning I should be paralyzed from the waist down, right? But it was not. But it was not. Now, that didn't mean I was in serious pain. I know. Mean, was, was. But also pain when they took off the cast. Right? Screaming out the name of Jesus out of the top of my lungs. Now, again, that brings us to the car accident. What happened there? I know. Mean, the worst case scenario is little Roddy hit me upside the head with a bat. Because we got into an argument over one you know, of Vivian's daughter. Vivian's daughter. And Vivian was, was too young for me and she tried to hit me over the head with a bat or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But then her and little Roddy, in order to cover it up their crime, because I started crying and yelling and all kind of shit when they hit me. And uh, I don't think I was silent. I think I started yelling. And uh, I also just think I was trying to convince them I was one of the two witnesses maybe for the first time. I don't know. I don't know. But again, that's not memory. That's, again, amnesia. And, uh, just like amnesia with Amanda. Amnesia with the three-story file. I, know. I don't remember anything happening with the child. I know. Or with uh, what happened when I turned down the road to drop a little variety off at Vivian's, but I know where he was going. Vivian's. I know. And the same with the three-story file. I don't know if something happened. Right. If it did, I don't remember it, and you can't make me remember something I can't remember, right? Now, I can make up hypotheticals, right? Like, I was sleeping on the couch. I know that. I know. I know why. <laughs> Daphne left me stranded in Tennessee, which started from a previous fight where she was standing in front of the door. Mm -hmm. Now, did she blow that up to where she was so mad at me, she left me stranded on the side of the road, saying, I'll get that motherfucker for putting me in the bed. Because mm -hmm. it pissed her off for some reason. What, you think I'm not strong enough to lift you up and gently put you in the bed? You think, even though I'm 170 pounds, I can't lift you up perfectly and g gently place you in the bed? That's the question. Or did you just go bat shit over it, right? Thinking I was trying to hurt you and Jonathan, did I? You seem fine to me, even on the trip to be pick up a man. You didn't seem like you lost Jonathan. Nor was I driving too reckless through the mountains, or we wouldn't have made it to the mountains, you did. Mm -hmm. So try another one. Anyway, anyway. So what was your problem? Then? Making a mountain out of a molehill? Right. Or a molehill into a mountain? Mm -hmm. Trying to find a fault, because it also seemed to me that you wanted me out the house. Well, leaving me stranded on the side of the road will get you exactly that. And trying to start a fight with me when I, you know, an argument with me, and I'm not, not even no, a normal person who argues with people, I know. But standing in the way of the door so I can't leave is not a good thing to do to a schizophrenic anyway. Now, I took karate and I did weightlifting before I met you. Did you know that? Well, that's why I could pick you up safely and put you in the bed without any problems. It's called sort of a hip toss deadlift combination, right? I deadlifted your body weights in my arms like this. I hugged you, picked you up, and put you in the bed, right? That wouldn't have hurt you or Jonathan at all. Oh, no. It might have surprised you, my strength, Daphne, but it didn't hurt you at all, oh, no. or Jonathan. I had you safely in my arms. Now, I wasn't carrying you over the threshold either. I oh, no. wasn't trying to lift you above my waist. Oh, no. But what I did is call it a combination hip toss and also picking you up in a deadlift type way with a bear hug. You know what that is? But I bear hugged you, secured you safely, and put you in the bed because you wouldn't get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, not sure of this, that you might have been playing sleeping with the enemy with me. Trying to get me to hit you or something. Of course you would deny it now. But were you? Would you honestly admit that now, Daphne? I doubt it. Because you want to find fault with me, always. You and Amanda. Now, someone's attacking me, but who else would know but us? YouTube don't seem to give a shit about this, Daphne, for 12 years. Nor Chris Hansen, nor anyone in the world. Not Dr. Phil, not Oprah, no one cares. You're right. 
Now, I'm just telling my side of the story, he said, she said type arguments. But the point is, I'm stronger than I look now and then. I can still deadlift around 200 pounds, Daphne. How much did you weigh? And that's with a broken back and a broken ankle. Now, if I could do that now and I'm overweight and fat and all that shit, what could I do when I was 170 pounds similar to Bruce Lee? Did you know that Shaolin monks can pick up 500 pounds, Daphne? And they're smaller than me. Do you know what I know? Or are you just a prejudiced person yourself? Question. Raised in Arkansas like a wetback or something, I don't know. <laughs> what to say, what to say, what to call you. And uh, calls again, uh, a Razorback, that's what they call it. Didn't mean wet back. Razorback, Razorback. I think that's what they call the Arkansas school mascot or something like that. A Razorback, right. Got a little confused with wet back. Sorry about that. That's what they call that because I think who entered the country illegally. You know? yeah. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to offend either, anyone, either one. But I forgot what it was actually called a Razorback, right. I think that's the Arkansas, uh, one of the university's mascots or something. But whatever, Daphne. I think you were ready to leave me anyway. I know. Anyone who knows her husband doesn't have any money and leaves him straight on the side of the road ain't a good wife. Period. I know. And if she don't expect the motherfucker to leave her, she's crazy. Because I, I might be crazy, but I'm always safety first, right? So even if your child was to come in there to me, I would ask her, uh, what you doing in here with me? <laughs> who showed you that? Why not? Why not? And what, you and Amanda think you can both take me out? No. See, the problem is, you know nothing happened. Right? If it had, you would have had to call the police yourself, retard. And I left as soon as I could, <laughs> safely get back to base. Now, I had to wait them to work out a room for me, because it's not as simply as snapping your fingers and say, oh, well, you can move back to base tomorrow. No, I gotta wait for them to get me a room. I know. Now, you can't disprove any of this either, either. Nor can I prove anything someone's accusing me happened as well. I know. But I know I didn't rape her. I would never rape your child because, A, if you were already that mad at me to begin with, wouldn't that make it worse, Daffy? Are you just stupid? I'm schizophrenic, and I know that. <laughs> Though I didn't become it until Norfolk or Sheena. I was fine until then, according to Dr. Ann Weinrep. And you can't take that out of my file, Captain Carey, B.A., whatever that stands for. <laughs> or Commander Asner, Sonia, at T. You're the highest ranking officers there, so you two must be the holdouts, right, on this shit, too. Trying to keep me paranoid schizophrenic, even though the VA determined this not, also did not exist prior to entry as well, I know. Like with Bethesda and Dr. Weinware. Mm -hmm. Two to one, even though you're a captain and a commander, how you like them apples? <laughs> Fuck you, you too. I know. You're not my friends either, I know. You're not even a good captain and a commander, because a good captain and commander would look out for the victim, me, versus the victimizers, Daphne and Amanda and King. And I bet you never asked Lieutenant Guzman, who was my our first company commander, what happened between me and King either, did you, Dr. Answer? Well, he's Filipino too. I know. And I never met Captain uh, Kate, uh, Carrie, mm -hmm. but I remember Dr. Oates, he was tall, kind of um, grayish, blackish hair, not uh, Mustache, glasses. Sonia was Filipina with short hair. Right, Sonia? And it's a little plump, but not too fat. Mm -hmm. You could ball her if you wanted to, if you're in the Filipino chicks. That's up to you. I'm not anymore. Have one, she's enough. <laughs> but, anyways, the point is, I remember you all on the. I remember Miss Mitchell down at med boards. I remember um, Miss, uh, I forget her, McFar uh, 
McFarland, maybe? I forget her name, but uh, she was the one who had me to run the med boards um, and get the signatures. Um, but uh, different things like that. Mm -hmm. I, don't know. I, I remember the tall guy with the black hair and black eyes, he helped me to move my furniture into my apartment and offered him you know, beer or whatever to help me out, but he helped me out for free, appreciate that. Uh, he he would write up the med boards, mm -hmm. and the shit was a female blonde. She um, was the commander of the med boards, right? and she had hair down to her shoulders. Am I remembering now? After all that time, Doctor Asner, Doctor uh, Captain Commander Asner, Doctor Asner, whatever you want to call yourself, or Captain. Dr. Carey. I, I, I don't remember meeting you unless you were the guy who interviewed me when I started laughing. Was that you? I don't remember. I don't remember. All of it. No, no one does, but I remember being in the med board for two weeks and I remember doing a little plaque with a lion and it was gold. Different little things like different little knickknacks like that and uh, different crafts and stuff like that and and you know the normal meal routines at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. And again, in by February, I, that's when I met Dafty. Right. And the same with Mary Bell, I also met her in February. And, uh, so, like I said, I don't know what y'all y'all's problem is and, uh, with me and you crazy women. And, uh, <clears throat> but I also swore Mary Bell not to do you the same machine. Right. And I didn't. And, uh, I didn't become as obsessed with you as I did with her. And I was just trying to write you letters to explain what went on in my past, right? Like Machina. Like Machina. And none of them were really too derogatory, just telling you what I learned in the Bible and stuff like that. Like Machina. Like Machina. And telling you about the signs and coincidences and my past life and things I found out later on that I didn't know. And some of it made me paranoid that something might have happened between you and your stepdad, some of the behavior you were exhibiting towards me, all right? Or maybe you're a transgender too, I don't know, I don't know. But I do remember having sex with you supposedly on your period or something, but that could have been, what, tomato paste? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just joking, all right? But again, I don't know. We're over, fine, fine. Patrick might be mine, he might not be mine, I don't know. Only one way to find out, the it is. If you don't want one, I don't want one. Fine, fine. Do one to others means that. If you don't want one, I don't want one. Mm -hmm. If Patrick don't want one, then happy being Scots or Mites or whoever you're with now. I know. If you're happy, Patrick, or you're happy, Mary Bell, if it makes you happy, can't be that bad. If it makes you happy, why the hell are you so sad? Right? Hear that, right? Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. What's going on? What's going on? You're acting crazier than me sometimes. I don't know. And I don't know why. I don't know. All I'm doing is telling you what I found out when I went to the library, period. I know. And it did describe a lower birth weight for Scott's baby and a higher birth weight if you got pregnant with me. I know. It's long ago. I know. Can't prove anything. It don't. It don't. You're right. You're right. But who else would have a problem with that but you? But you. Or Patrick. I know. Or Scott. Or your new husband, Mike. I don't know. Or Michael. Right. But again, I didn't call you and ask you to even tell me that. I know. You, for some reason, were divorcing Scott, and apparently you didn't marry Mike. I don't care. Or Michael. I don't, know. don't know his whole name, but I think it was Simbarski or Simbarski, something like that. I don't know. I, I was trying to. Last week I did try to do some of that internet searching thing, but they wanted a bunch of money, so fuck that shit. I ain't gonna contact your crazy ass. I ain't got the money for that shit. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm at. Easier than I know where you're at. Mm -hmm. It says something about Colorado, whatever. Rocky Mountain High High Colorado. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but whatever, I don't care. I know. If you're in Colorado, I don't care. 
though a recent post said you might be in Georgia. Whatever. I know you went to Columbus with Scott, right? Because he was in the Army, and there's a base of the Army Columbus, Georgia, right? There's also Fort Stewart in Georgia. I know. I know about both bases, right? Thanks for telling me. <laughs> But you did promise to move with me to Georgia if Patrick was mine and not Scott's. You sort of did. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I don't care either because you're being a bitch about it. <laughs> Who wants to be the father of a child where the mother didn't want you to be the father anyway? I know. Thanks for nothing, but I didn't want to get you pregnant any more than you want to get pregnant. I didn't plan that shit out. I was just tired of your shit and cheated on you with Michelle child and didn't tell you like Mark told you. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that too. Well, why didn't this cause of how you're treating me with Bart and Steve? I mean, right? right. <laughs> Had you not treated me like shit for 18 months, I wouldn't have cared. And also, I was having to travel back and forth to even see you, and you didn't seem, seem to give a shit about that either. My car was about breaking no. <laughs> you didn't seem to care about that. I know. And that's what I tried to explain to you all in the last letter, and it's called a breakup or dear Mary letter. <laughs> not a dear John, you're not a dear John, but a dear Mary. So anyway, that's the point there. Now, I don't care if Patrick is mine, if you don't, and Patrick don't care and was raised by Mike or Scott, whatever. Whatever. I don't even know what he looks like now. He should be in his 20s and in college or whatever, or working, right? If he is, great. Go for it, boy. Mm -hmm. Lion, Scott, sir, whatever, whatever. I don't even know if she was seeing Mike, but she married him, I guess, after Scott. All right. Congratulations. Glad you're doing well. Mm -hmm. Mean that. Mean that. I know sometimes I can seem sarcastic, but that's because I don't know what to say about all this crap. <laughs> you, Amanda, and Daphne, or whoever, I know. Right? Right. Now, you quit bringing the crap up, I'll quit defending myself and saying I never did it anyway. anyway. <laughs> Problem about that is, your mother was responsible for you more than I was anyway. If she let you came in there to me without locking the door, that's on her. Right. And I just brought you back in there and asked you who should have let you said Grandma. If that's what happened. Man. But only Daphne would be conscious enough to know that. <laughs> And why is she lying to you if that's all that happened, right? You just woke me up on the couch. Which, which would seem more normal than the, the sexual one where I dressed you and licked you one time. Or you would have to go in there and wake me up. Now, only if Daphne told you only go in there so far would I have to go over there to you and wake up myself. Maybe, uh, see what you wanted if I suddenly became aware you'd been in the room. Does that sound reasonable, Daphne, that you were awake and allowed your child to come in there to me? Not at all. Because, hey, that's the entrapment of your husband trying to get him to fuck your own daughter at four years old, which I would never do. B, why would she say Grandma showed her how to lick her one time or show her her penis? That even makes sense, Daphne. <laughs> I would laugh that shit off <laughs> whether it happened or not or did she have to go in there further than you wanted her to to wake me up I mean if she's in there and I'm sleeping on the couch what's she supposed to do just stand there watching me all night or go over to me and wake me up what do you want to be the truth Daphne that I licked her one time and showed her my penis or that she went over there to wake me up and her vagina's in my face and I didn't know what the hell was going on, and I woke up either way and asked her who showed her that, huh? Which one do you want to be true, Daphne and Amanda? It's up to you, if I don't remember it, and yet you do. Uh -huh. As well, because of the three-story fault. So I keep telling you, I don't remember shit. <laughs> you know, that that's within the time frame of having amnesia, too. And if that was brief encounter, less than a minute or two or whatever, right? Might not even remember that shit. And if you're trying to make me remember that shit, I said, doesn't that seem more dreamlike to you anyway? That the child would let me undress her and I was just asleep? <laughs> don't you understand that children don't do that normally in reality and let the adult 
She just may undress her unless mom told her to or grandma. So I mean, <laughs> she was with me for two years, only a few days before I came back base. That's not on me, that's on grandma and mom. If it happened at all. So Amanda, when the guard city police department after someone ratted us out, <laughs> was it you? And called the police department in Garden City, which anyone can get the number at any time and call it, right, Amanda? Would you do that to being your mom? Mm -hmm. Trying to turn us both in? Uh -huh. Yet when they called your mom, she said it never happened. Right. So did she betray you? But not me. Because I never said it happened either. I, don't know. I was just making up a ridiculous story, which I stuck the one for three years on YouTube, and then the other I changed on the new channel, right? Saying I did do something sexual with you that you let me do it, right? I don't care because I can't prove either story true. I don't know. Problem is, neither can you or your mom. I don't know. See, your mom did not act accordingly when I moved back to base. See, normal people, mm -hmm. when you molest their daughters and they know about it, do what? Call the police. Call the police! Call the police. There's a madman around. You think you're mad? Too unstable? Knocking down chairs? Knocking down tables? In a restaurant in Red West in town. <laughs> Western town and dead at war. Eastern boys and Western girls. Western girls. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? Normally, when a child goes in there to the stepdad, the mom would call the police anyway. And, uh, why didn't she, Amanda? That night. And, uh, why did she think you would be more congenant to say grandma to the police? To if asked by them what happened, who showed you that, would she tell them grandma too, Daphne? Would she? If that really happened? And you remember the whole conversation yourself? And are lying too? Are you? I don't know. I don't remember. Do I? Or am I just piecing together the bullshit from the three story fall too? Mm -hmm. And you won't let it go. Or man, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know who's attacking me because they won't use the real name like I do. I ain't got nothing to hide anyway. I would know exactly what to do if she came in there and woke me up. Mm -hmm. Period. Take her back in there to you and ask her who shared her that to get you both off my back. You know why? You know what that would do? She said, Grandma? Who she was living with for two years, not me. <laughs> A, it would freak you out because you wouldn't know what the hell to do if she said grandma and she just came in there to me in a few minutes anyway to wake me up. Mm -hmm. And B, it would fuck up your plan if you wanted me to have sex with her too and I asked her who should that and she said grandma. <laughs> right there? Right there. So I outsmarted you and your mom and whoever was trying to set me up with that shit too, didn't I? And, uh, by asking her one simple question. Who showed you that and her saying grandma? Without any provocation on my part. Mm -hmm. Busted, Daphne. Bye-bye.